Hello students and welcome to Crop Science 6049. Today we are going to look at biological nitrogen fixation. By the end of this lesson, you must be able to Describe biological nitrogen fixation in legumes Describe the role of nitrogen fixing bacteria in symbiosis with legumes Describe factors affecting biological nitrogen fixation and lastly, outline the importance of biological nitrogen fixation as alternative to inorganic fertilizers. Let's take a look at nitrogen fixation in general. Nitrogen fixation is a process by which molecular nitrogen in the air is converted to ammonia or related nitrogenous compounds in the soil. Let's take a look at the different types of nitrogen fixation. There is physical nitrogen fixation, which include fixation by lightning and industrial nitrogen fixation. We also have biological nitrogen fixation, which include asymbiotic nitrogen fixation that is the fixation of nitrogen that is done by free living bacteria and also symbiotic nitrogen fixation that is done by bacteria in legumes. Now let's take a look at biological nitrogen fixation in legumes, which is the main focus of your syllabus. Biological nitrogen fixation is a process whereby atmospheric nitrogen is reduced or is converted to ammonia in the presence of nitrogenes. Nitrogenes is a biological catalyst found naturally in certain microorganisms such as asymbiotic rhizobium and frankia, or free living bacteria. This is the equation that represents the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia and it's catalyzed by nitrogenes. From the equation that we have seen, it is shown that ATP is the source of energy that is necessary for the reduction of nitrogen to ammonia. In rhizobia, for instance, ATP results from the oxidative degradation of sugars and related compounds. So ATP is produced from the breaking down of sugars that are made by photosynthesis. These sugars are manufactured by the host plant during photosynthesis and transferred to the nodules. In general, for each nitrogen fixed by rhizobium, the plant fixes 1 to 20 grams of carbon through photosynthesis. This is an indication that symbiotic nitrogen fixation requires additional energy, which in nitrate-fed plants can be used to produce more products of photosynthesis. Now let's take a look at the role of nitrogen fixing bacteria in symbiosis with legumes. Biological nitrogen fixation in legume is brought about by symbiotic associations of microorganisms with plants. Our focus centers on legume rhizobium symbiosis. Leguminous plants fix atmospheric nitrogen by working symbiotically with a bacteria called rhizobia, which live in the root nodules. Now let's take a look at what is symbiotic relationship. A symbiotic relationship is one in which two organisms form a mutually beneficial relationship. That is a relationship where both the bacteria and the plant benefit. Rhizobia infects the root years of leguminous plants and produce nodules. The nodules become the worm for the bacteria where they obtain energy from the host plant and take free nitrogen from the soil and process it into combined nitrogen. So, the bacteria is benefiting from the plant by obtaining energy from the carbohydrates that are produced by the plant. And in return, the bacteria 
is converting free nitrogen from the air in the soil to a nitrogen in the form that the plant can absorb. So in return, the plant receives the fixed nitrogen from nodules and produces food and forage protein. Nitrogenase is the enzyme that fixes atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. Though abundantly present in the atmosphere, legume crops cannot utilize nitrogen directly and must instead take it through other forms such as ammonia or nitrate. In the air there is a lot of nitrogen. About 78% of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen. But plants cannot use that nitrogen directly. So the bacteria in their nodules, especially of legumes, is the one that is able to convert the atmospheric nitrogen into a form that the plants can use. The triple bond in nitrogen is highly resistant to changes in oxidation state, and nitrogenases found only in nitrogen-fixing bacteria are the only proteins capable of reducing nitrogen to ammonia. But nitrogenase is an oxygen-sensitive enzyme. Oxygen concentration must be controlled within the nodules, and that is done by leg hemoglobin. Too much oxygen is not good for nitrogenase, and too little oxygen is not good for nitrogenase, and leg hemoglobin is the compound that is used to control the concentration of oxygen in the nodules. The major role of leg hemoglobin involves protection of nitrogenous enzyme from denaturation if exposed to nitrogenous concentration of oxygen, but at the same time supply ample amount of oxygen to the bacteria for respiration. Leg hemoglobin is a macromolecule that is synthesized by both symbiotic partners, the rhizobia and the host plant. Rhizobium synthesizes the hem portion and the plant, the globin. Just like in humans, leg hemoglobin fixes oxygen. It is responsible for the red or brown color of active nodules. Non-nitrogen fixing nodules have a white nodule content or green content when the globin has degenerated. Now let's take a look at the factors limiting biological nitrogen fixation in plants. Interaction between the bacteria and the legume is affected by edaphic, climatic, and biotic factors. These factors affect either the bacteria, the host plant, or both. Now let's take a look at edaphic factors. Edaphic factors, they relate to the soil. So every time you hear the word edaphic, know that it is relating to, to the soil. The six main edaphic factors limiting biological nitrogen fixation are, first of all, soil moisture. Soil moisture and water logging prevents the development of root hairs and sites of nodulation and interfere with a normal diffusion of oxygen in the root system of plants. Low soil moisture reduces the number of rhizobia in the soils and prevents formation of nodules and nitrogen fixation. Water shortage in the soil for a long time also promotes the decaying of nodule. The next edaphic factor is soil pH. Soil pH and related problems of calcium deficiency and aluminium and magnesium toxicity adversely affect nodulation, nitrogen fixation, and plant growth. Soil pH affects both the legume and the bacteria involved in the symbiotic relationship. Rhizobium are often negatively affected by soil pH values that are less than 6. If soil pH is less than 6, lime may be added to increase soil pH and thus increase biological nitrogen fixation. There are some exceptions, for example, the symbiosis between red clover and its rhizobium appears to function well at pH values that are less than pH 6. 
The next edaphic factor is excess mineral nitrogen. Reduction of biological nitrogen fixation due to soil fertility will often be related to either excess of soil nitrates or deficiency of some essential nutrients limiting plant growth and development. In general, excess soil nitrate levels will depress biological nitrogen fixation. Mineral nitrogen inhibits the rhizobium infection process and also inhibits nitrogen fixation. Some strains of rhizobium, such as stem nodulating, fix nitrogen actively when plants are growing in high nitrogen soils. Application of large quantities of nitrogen fertilizers inhibits nitrogen fixation. But low doses of nitrogen fertilizers can stimulate early growth of legumes and increase their overall nitrogen fixation. If, however, there is any suspicion of nitrogen deficiencies, soil tests should be conducted. If soil tests indicate a significant deficiency of nitrogen, then appropriate amounts of nitrogen must be applied. The next edaphic factor is phosphorus deficiency. Phosphorus deficiency reduces nodulation, nitrogen fixation, and plant growth. Phosphorus influences nodule development through its basic functions in plants as an energy source. Inadequate phosphorus restricts root growth, the process of photosynthesis, translocation of sugars, and other functions which directly or indirectly influence nitrogen fixation by legume plants. The next edaphic factor is the deficiency of calcium, molybdenum, cobalt, and boron. Various microelements such as copper, iron, molybdenum, cobalt, and boron are necessary for nitrogen fixation. Some of these are components of nitrogenous and like hemoglobin. For example, molybdenum is a component of both leghemoglobin and nitrogenous, and iron and molybdenum are components of leghemoglobin. Now let's take a look at the climatic factors that affect biological nitrogen fixation. First of all, let's take a look at extreme temperatures. Extreme temperatures affect nitrogen fixation adversely. This is easy to understand because nitrogen fixation is driven by enzymes. However, there are differences between symbiotic systems in their ability to tolerate high temperatures that are greater than 35 degrees and lower temperatures that are less than 25 degrees Celsius. Next climatic factor is light or availability of light. The availability of light regulates photosynthesis upon which biological nitrogen fixation depends. This is demonstrated by diurnal variations in nitrogenous activities. Very few plants can grow and fix nitrogen under shed. If legume crops are not weeded or if are intercropped with crops like maize, their nitrogen fixation and growth will be reduced due to shedding. Now let's take a look at biotic factors. These are factors that are related to living things. The following are the biotic factors. First of all, excess defoliation of the host plant. Defoliation decreases the photosynthetic ability of legumes. It impairs nitrogen fixation and can lead to nodule decay. You may be wondering what defoliation is. Defoliation is simply the removal of the green parts of the plant, which may include leaves. The next biotic factor is crop competition. Intercropping legumes with non-leguminous crops can result in competition for water and nutrients. This competition can affect nitrogen fixation negatively. The last biotic factor is insects and nematodes. Insects and nematodes have also been reported to interfere with nodule formation, development, and functions. 
So what are the importance of biological nitrogen fixation as an alternative to inorganic fertilizers? The first importance is the greater use of biological nitrogen fixation can reduce problems with air and water pollution. The over-application of synthetic nitrogen fertilizers results in the excessive nitrate levels in groundwater locations. Excessive nitrate concentrations may have detrimental effects on human health. The application of synthetic nitrogen fertilizers involves burning of non-renewable fossil fuels such as diesel fuel and gasoline, which have been shown to contribute to air pollution. The next importance is the greater use of biological nitrogen fixation can help lower production costs and thus increase profit margins for producers. The use of crops that fix nitrogen in crop rotations can significantly reduce fertilizer needs for crops in the rotation. For example, following beans with maize in a rotation will allow profitable yields for maize with less expense for fertilizer purchase and application. The next importance is that biological nitrogen has little contribution to the increase of soil pH in soils as compared to inorganic fertilizers. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, additions and subtractions, please write them in the comment section. If you have benefited from this lesson, click the like button.